Hare Krishna. So welcome everyone once again. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Welcome everyone. So uh, very happy to be connected again after a long gap uh, uh, to read from Bhagavad Gita. But today's session we will just do a recap and uh, question and answer session. So we had completed six chapters of Bhagavad Gita and it'll be nice that if we can do a recap of the first six chapters. Yes, so who would like to share the story of the first chapter and the acronym? First chapter. Yes, George. I'll go through, I'll go through it quickly. So chapter one, uh, the acronym is DOUBT. Mm -hmm. uh, D stands for uh, Dhritarashtra and Duryodhana. Dhritarashtra inquires about the war. Uh, Duryodhana boasts about his army. And uh, Duryodhana requests all warriors to support Grandfather Bhishma. Mm. Letter O stands for ominous result. Too many signs indicate inevitable defeat for Duryodhana. And then Krishna and the Pandavas blow their conch shells and it creates fear in the heart of Duryodhana. Letter U stands for uncertainty. Arjuna requests Krishna to bring the chariot in the middle of the battlefield. And then Arjuna sees his relatives, his friends, his teachers. And then uh, Arjuna feels uh, uncertain, especially after seeing his opponents. Letter B stands for bewilderment. Foreseeing the consequences of the war, Arjuna is now confused. Arjuna begins to analyze his predicament and bereft of broader spiritual vision, Arjuna becomes bewildered. And finally, letter T stands for turning point. Now Arjuna justifies his decision to retreat from fighting. So many soldiers, warriors will die would be a crew um, bad karma. Bereft of the company of near and dear, once have an unrivaled kingdom is of no use. Killing will destroy the family unit and social structure and pollute generations. Arjuna sets his weapons aside. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. So as we understand and know, the first chapter is basically all about a brief about what's going on in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, right? And uh, of course, the chapter begins with Dhritarashtra asking the question to uh, Sanjaya, you know, what's going on? What's going on in the war? And uh, as... Uh, as we discussed, as George discussed and shared the acronym, there was ominous result in terms of the conch shells being blown and Duryodhan feeling the fear in his heart and uncertainty where Arjuna feels, you know, unsure what to do. And he asks Krishna to bring his chariot in the middle of the battlefield. And then he looks at everyone and then he gets bewildered and ultimately He's confused. He puts forth <clears throat> many arguments as to why not to fight and ultimately keeps his bow and arrow down. Yes, so that's that's the that's how the whole Bhagavad Gita, um, the first chapter of the Bhagavad Gita is acronym doubt. Let's move on to the second chapter. Yes, Mila. Uh, for chapter two, contents of the Gita summarized. Um, the acronym is Gita, G-I-T-A. First letter, G for Guru. Through Arjuna's example, we learn that one must approach a Guru. Guru who comes in an authentic lineage of teachers or parampara. Guru is required to help reawaken the pure inner consciousness. Uh, the Guru itself, you said, is a self-realized soul and is coming from the uh, disciplic succession. Um, next letter, I, identity, fundamental understanding of spiritual life is that we are not this body, we are external, uh, we are eternal spirit, so, sorry, 
Krishna describes the characteristics and qualities of the soul, uh, which is Sachit Ananda. Body goes through phases. The soul is unchanged and remains the same. Two duties. We have Svadharma, duties towards your current situation, dealing with the material world. Sanatana Dharma, duties towards your true self, spiritual duties. One should lead a balanced life, maintaining both duties. Last acronym is A, Atmaram. One should perform his duties with determination and enthusiasm. Such a person becomes an Atmaram, a spiritually realized soul who finds pleasure in the self. Krishna explains how the Atmaram, Rama, is unaffected by happiness or distress, gain or loss, honor or dishonor. This is how we should be equipoised in every situation. Mm -hmm. Transcending the dualities of this world, such a sp spiritualist rids himself of qualities such as fear, attachment, and anger. Gita, chapter 2. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mila. Yes, so as we understand the whole second chapter... This is the chapter where Krishna tries to give the entire summary of the Bhagavad Gita. One of the one of the longest chapter. It has almost seventy two verses, and uh, as soon as in the previous chapter where Krishna where Arjuna is confused and he keeps his bow and arrows down, he immediately then realizes that he has no other option but to take shelter of Krishna. So Arjuna requests Krishna. That please, you know, guide me. You know, he surrenders himself to Krishna and asks for guidance. You know, and this is one of the most important things where we have to understand that, you know, to to grow spiritually in one's life, one has to has to accept not just any guru, one has to accept a bona fide guru. You know, this is where many people they end up doing mistakes you know they before buying a phone or a gadget or any any car or anything they do so much research right although it is a material thing but they do so much of research but when it comes to spirituality they just blindly believe on any person who just shows some magical tricks or who uses some flowery words or who does some charitable activities and claims himself to be God. You know, this is where we have to be very, very careful on approaching someone and seeing his behavior, his character, right? Only a person who is surrendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, right? who has control over his speech, who speaks from the Vedic literatures, from the scriptures, yeah, and one who considers himself to be a servant of the servant of the Lord, only that person can be considered to be a bona fide guru. And especially the most important point of all of this which qualifies a person to be a guru is whether he comes from a disciplic succession. So this is where we have to understand that that's why Arjuna also realized that I have to take Krishna or you know take guidance from Krishna and accept him as a guru. Yeah. And of course, this chapter talks about the basic, basic fundamental fundamentals of life in general. Who we are, what is our true identity, you know, because we, we carry ourselves with so many um, positions and we portray ourselves to be this, that, in uh, based on our nationality, based on our color, based on our race, based on our designations, based on our you know, uh, material profile. Uh, but actually speaking, our true identity is that we are spirit soul. Yeah, so Krishna gives a 
series of verses where he explains that how the soul is eternal and the body keeps changing right and then after that krishna explains arjuna that look it's not that a person has to be completely devoid of his duties one has to balance his life in such a way that he takes care of his Swadharma, that is duties towards his current situation, his role, his responsibilities to, for the society in general, but at the same time doesn't neglect his spiritual dharma, yeah, that is Sanatan dharma, his spiritual duties. So one has to balance that and lead a life accordingly. And Krishna explains that one who does lead a balanced life with determination and enthusiasm, such a person eventually becomes Atmaram. Yeah? Atmaram is a person who finds, who is a realized soul who finds pleasure from within. This is a very important point because many times people get carried away with too much materialism or and ignore their spiritual life or get into spiritualism just to escape from material duty. Too much spirituality is very good. There's a difference. You understood? Mm -hmm. Being spiritual is very good. But being spiritual and unknowingly escaping from material duties is bad. So one has to learn to be balanced. And how one can learn to be balanced? Only when one has a guru, a teacher who guides and also being in the right association. Yeah, so when we are in the right association, we can always get guidance to lead a life in a balanced way. Yeah. Great. So let's move on to the third chapter. Mona, you want to share the acronym for the third chapter? Sure. Hare Krishna, everyone. Uh, third chapter, Karma Yoga Summary. The acronym is TREE. T stands for Tiaga, which is a true re renunciation and to give up the mentality that one is the controller and enjoyer of all his deeds. So how do we progress on the rungs of uh, yoga is by renunciating this control and uh, this enjoyment and um, directing it uh, to um, Krishna. Uh, so we all exist to perform our responsibilities in the material world, however, we need to remain detached. Or rungs of the ladder, uh, the yoga ladder. Uh, how would we progress on our journey spiritually uh, with the intention of being liberated? Karma Kanda, which is material enjoyment through religious means. Uh, Sakama Karma Yoga, when we offer a portion of the results to God. So we first serve and offer to Krishna. And Nishkama Karma Yoga is to accept what's required and offers the rest to God. So we accept just enough and the rest is offered to God. That's uh, the rungs of the ladder. E, exemplary. Spiritualists continue working in the world for the sole purpose of setting the proper example to others uh, to follow and be inspired. So you lead by example, you know, whatever great men do, uh, mm. people follow. And um, <clears throat> karma yoga, uh, which is the practical process by which one overcomes one's material attachments through working in the world. We perform our duties, even if it's not perfect or whatever. Uh, and, um, that actually comes back in chapter six because 
uh, even if it's not perfect, it's okay because we will continue that journey. And then E, the last E is enemy of the soul. Um, the enemy of the soul is lust. Um, mm. Lust is the eternal enemy of the soul. Um, it leads to sense gratification in the material world. We need to safeguard love as it is the essence of the soul. Lust impels one to seek immediate gratification and abandon activities that actually benefit them by controlling our desires to enjoy this material world. Quality of the soul is to love and to serve. Lust, greed, anger, envy, we stay away from. Very nice, very nice. Thank you, thank you, Mona. Yes, so as, as Mona also beautifully described and explained about the third chapter where the acronym is TREE, T stands for Tyaga, renunciation, especially Krishna tells Arjuna that it's not about renouncing your material duties. It's not about renouncing all the wealth that you have. But true renunciation is to give up the mentality yeah, that I am the controller, I am the enjoyer, all these things. Yeah. So most important is how one develops the mood of being renounced from being the controller and enjoyer. Yeah. And then Krishna explains that how it's very important for one to do or perform karma yoga. And Krishna explains that in the karma yoga, there are three rungs. Hmm? One category of people are those who are doing karma, performing karma, but their purpose is to have whatever it takes, but to enjoy material life. So, they will use religious practices as means to enjoy material life. Yeah, they will perform religious activities just so that they can enjoy material life. That's it. They may appear very spiritual people. And to be honest, almost 99% of the people in this world, they believe in this. They will do, they will practice like this. Their whole and sole purpose of going to temples or anything is only so that their desires can be fulfilled. Their problems can be taken away. That's it. No. So that is karma kanda or karma kandis. People who practice, they are called karma. Sakama karma is people who believe in God and their idea of performing karma is that, okay, I have to give something. Yeah. So let me give something to God and rest is for me to enjoy. That is Sakama Karma Yoga. But the main or the most important rung of Karma Yoga ladder is Nishkama Karma. No? Someone who practices Karma Yoga with the understanding that everything belongs to the Lord. I am just doing my duty. And all the fruits of my karma, the credit goes to the Lord, belongs to the Lord. So it doesn't mean that you earn something and you give everything as charity. Please don't misunderstand this. Yeah, It, it only means that one understands that everything, all the fruits that I earn from my work or whatever I earn belongs to the Lord. I am just a caretaker. And I use it wisely for various purposes. Understood, everyone? So that is sakama, nishkama karma. This is where we need to, this is the kind of karma that we need to focus on, nishkama. And of course, then Krishna gives the exemplary behavior. Yeah, whatever great man does, common man follow. Yeah. And Krishna, Arjuna asks this question. Why 
one is impelled to do sinful activities even though unwillingly. And then Krishna answers by saying it is lust only Arjuna. Yeah. So that's the summary of the third chapter. Acronym tree. And now we'll move on to the fourth chapter. Let's see. Devaditya, you want to share the acronym of fourth chapter? Yeah, Prabhupada, sure, sure. A chapter four, Transcendental Knowledge. Uh, and the acronym is EARS. E stands for Eternal Knowledge. Krishna spoke this knowledge since the beginning of time. Uh, he spoke this to uh, Vivaswan and then he told this to uh, the son. Uh, this same, the same knowledge has been passed in discipline succession. Krishna appears very millennium to deliver the pious and uh, to inhalate the miscreants as well as to re-establish the principles of religion. E stands for accurate understanding. Transcendental knowledge received through eternal education system. One gains an accurate understanding. There are also different graduations or spiritual elevation, which is verse 11. Krishna re-emphasized that there is only one God. Krishna outlines the true criteria and propose of a caste system. R stands for removing reactions. Transcendental knowledge not only helps to clear up philosophical doubts, it also helps one to clear up the karmic bank balance. Karma, vikarma, akarma. Activities performed on the spiritual level has no reaction and ultimately frees one from anxieties and entanglements of the world, akarma. And S stands for sacrifice. In order to acquire, understand and realize transcendental knowledge, one must make a sacrifice. Sacrifice help um, refine one's character by relinquishing one's pride, render faithful service, sincerely inquire, inquire to a bona fide guru so that the heart becomes fertile ground for a spiritual knowledge to blossom. Yes, thank you Devaditya. Yes, so Krishna in the first chapter shares the most important understanding of who we are. <clears throat> the foundation of our spiritual life depends on that. Yeah, That we are not this body, we are the spirit soul. Right? In the second chapter. And then in the third chapter, he explains Arjuna that, look, you need to be practical. Yeah, You need to do your uh, duties. You need to do your karma. Mm -hmm. And in order to do your karma, the right understanding of doing your karma, your activity, is that you do it as a service to the Lord. So as Krishna speaks this knowledge, yeah, in the first, in the second chapter and the third chapter, Krishna wanted to re-emphasize to Arjuna that look, don't think that this knowledge is something new. This knowledge is something which I have given initially uh, to the sun god, whose name is Vivaswan, and Vivaswan passed on this knowledge to Swayambhuva Manu and then eventually Ikshvaku, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So, Krishna shares that he had spoken this knowledge in the beginning of time. And this same knowledge has been passed on in disciplic succession. And Krishna also shares that millennium after millennium he comes. The most famous verse you know, is there in fourth chapter. He says, Yada Yada Hi Dharmasya Glanir Bhavati Bharata. Hmm? So, of course, if the knowledge is eternal and it is ever refreshed, yeah, there will be accurate understanding. One who practices this knowledge under a bona fide guru, under a disciple -like succession, the understanding will be accurate. Yeah. So, Krishna in this chapter also emphasizes that 
even in spiritual life, there are different gradations. Yeah, it's not that anyone who practices spirituality all comes into one category. No, there are people who are spiritually very, very elevated. Hmm? So, one has to understand that in the initial phase, a person who practices spirituality, he is called sadhaka. Sadhaka means a student. Right? And as that student progresses and understands the various aspects of spirituality, he becomes more elevated. Yeah. And of course, Krishna in this chapter also, verse 12, he re-emphasizes that there is only one God. Yeah, Many people have this misunderstanding that Indian religious system, there are so many gods. Yeah. Actually, all of them, except Krishna, are demigods, devatas, who have certain roles and responsibilities to manage and maintain this universe. Yeah. And then, of course, Krishna explains that it is me who have created this caste system for a particular purpose. So that everything, everything works in a smoother fashion. And this caste system is not based on birth. It is based on the qualities that one imbibes or one has or one develops. Hmm? So like that he explains and then it is said that one who understands the knowledge perfectly, it has the power to remove reactions. Hmm? This is where I had explained that how Shastra or scriptures are known as the weapon to cut the knot of ignorance. That is why it is very important that one develops their spiritual knowledge and not just blindly follow like a herd of a calf or, or, or a cattle or a, or a goat. Yeah. So, in this section, Krishna explains that how karma is not just action which is pious. There is also something called as vikarma, which is impious activity. So both karma and vikarma, they both accrue reactions. Yeah, if one does good karma, they will get good reaction. If one does bad karma, they get bad reaction. For both of this, one has to take birth. So hence Krishna recommends akarma. What is akarma? Those activities which are performed on a spiritual level. The activities may appear to be good or bad. For example, Arjuna was trying to use his bow and arrow, his time and energy to kill. If you just look at that activity, it is a bad action. It looks like a vikarma. It is a sinful action to kill someone. Right? But because he was doing it as per the dharmic principles or as per the instructions of the Supreme Lord, that activity became a karma, no reaction. Yeah. So it is not the action that determines. It is the intention that determines if one gets the reaction or not. Okay, And then of course Krishna shares that how to achieve anything in life. One has to perform sacrifice. One has to sacrifice their time, energy and effort to gain anything in life. 
right so only when one performs sacrifice hmm, to relinqu relinquish one's pride and render service and inquire from a teacher a guru then the heart becomes fertile for spiritual knowledge so this is a summary of the fourth chapter this chapter is also known as uh, gyana yoga yeah, gyana means knowledge okay yes so let's do the recap of the fifth chapter sonia you want to do the recap So, chapter 6 is Karma Yoga, Action in Krishna Consciousness. So, the acronym is STEP. S is Stay in the World. Arjun still considers work and renunciation to be mutually exclusive paths. Thus, Krishna elaborates. One who works in the spiritual consciousness is automatically elevated to the platform of renunciation. Karma Yoga offers a progressive means of spiritual development while simultaneously staying in the world. For example, lotus leaf. T. Three doers. Krishna explains that there are three doers in any activity. The individual soul, the super soul and material nature. The individual soul, jeev, desires. Super soul, Paramatma, sanctions the desires. Material nature, Prakriti, provides the ability to fulfill the desires. E, equal vision. Super soul resides in every living being. The advanced spiritualist is able to see every life form. So respect every living being. Different bodies with different qualities are produced according to one's past actions. Yet, each entity is of the same spiritual quality. P. Peace. We come into this world with nothing and we leave with nothing. In the interim, our claims to proprietorship and attachment to various objects create fear, insecurity and conflict. Peace formula. To understand that Supreme Lord is the ultimate proprietor and benefactor and we are simple caretakers. To that extent, we can experience a sense of peace within. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Sonia. So, Welcome, Ramsa. as the chapter progresses, you know, in... in Fourth chapter, Krishna explains the importance of understanding the spiritual knowledge from the perspective that it is not something new. It is eternal. That in itself is a very, very big leap of faith. Hmm? Or it gives a confidence to the student or the disciple. Okay. So, here now further, Arjuna had this doubt. He was thinking that practicing spirituality means one has to give up everything, abstain from everything, leave everything and practice spirituality. Yeah. So Krishna gives an example, gives the example of a lotus leaf. Yeah, just like a lotus leaf, although it is in the water, but it does not get affected by even a drop of water. Right? So 
Krishna explains to Arjuna that work and renunciation can both be followed simultaneously if simply one is spiritually conscious. Yeah, if one is Krishna conscious. And if one is Krishna consciousness, one is practicing Krishna consciousness, then he can easily be elevated hmm, to the platform of renunciation. One does not have to leave things or abstain from things externally. Uh, abstain from responsibilities externally. Yeah. And then Krishna explains that how any which ways it is not that a individual soul or individual person is the doer that he is doing everything. Any which ways everything in our life whatever we do in our life it is the desire of the individual soul who desires. And the Paramatma, the super soul in the heart of the person sanctions the desire. And only when the Paramatma sanctions the material nature provides uh, the ability to fulfill that desire. Hmm? So Krishna explains that it's not that one person wants something and his desires are fulfilled immediately. There are three doers. Hmm? And then Krishna explains that how the exemplary person, a person who is uh, spiritually oriented person who is elevated in spiritual life he sees everyone with equal vision yeah he does not consider a cow or a dog or a dog eater or elephant differently he sees everyone with equal vision. Hmm? And then Krishna speaks about the most important verse, one of the most important verse. Yeah? That in, in this, everyone in this world is looking for peace. Yeah? Why? Because everyone is afraid of insecurity, of conflict, of losing things in life. And Krishna, in this last verse of this chapter, gives us the peace formula. And that peace formula is to understand that the Supreme Lord is the ultimate proprietor and benefactor. Right? The reason why we do not have peace in life is because we think everything belongs to me. The moment we realize that nothing belongs to me, everything belongs to the Lord, I am simply a caretaker, you will lose all fear, all insecurity. You can happily go to sleep, not worrying about losing anything. It is said that almost Three or four in every five people is suffering from stress-related disease. Yeah. And ultimately, what is the source of this stress? The source of the st stress is the thought that I am going to lose my relationship my wealth, my possessions, my everything, my body. Isn't it? That's what people are worried about. But Anxiety. Only, yeah. Yeah. So, But only when we understand that everything, including my own body, 
belongs to the Lord. I am just a caretaker. And the moment one starts thinking in that way, they can they will immediately become stress free. Right? So that's how the fifth chapter of Bhagavad Gita ends. Let's move on to the sixth chapter. And uh, Umesh Ji, are you free to share the acronym? Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, I don't have notes with me, but I will just try to do a little bit of uh, this one. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Whatever you uh, remember from the sixth chapter. Yeah. Okay. Chapter uh, six. The title is Dhyan Yoga and the acronym is EASY, E-A-S-Y. Uh, 1 to 9 chapter uh, comes E, where is basically the Krishna explains uh, about uh, the renunciation. The person who has uh, basically the, renounced the desires is a true mystic rather than the one who performs uh, the other rituals and fires, the yoga, fire, and other those kind of uh, things, what he is doing. And those person who is unattached to the desire or who has uh, uh, left the uh, sensual uh, uh, renounce the desires for this uh, sensual uh, gratitude, gratification. Krishna further explains the person has to control his mind. Because if uh, the mind is under control, then the person is uh, can become the yogi. There is the uh, his uh, soul is uh, controlled, and he can use the prakriti uh, for uh, progress in the Krishna consciousness. Hmm. If a person cannot control his mind, then the mind can become the his uh, worst enemy. Hmm. If the mind is controlled, then it can become his uh, true friend. Krishna uh, further uh, explains about the mind that if, the, if you have controlled the mind, then you look on all uh, good or bad, heat or cold, gold or pebble with the, in the similar uh, manner rather than uh, looking into uh, uh, different. So then the 10 to 36 Krishna explains about the Ashtang Yoga, wherein he explain how how this ashtang yoga is basically the uh, ast means eight uh, uh, mix eight type of yogas are combined where you use the eight uh, parts and uh, further uh, then you have to go to a secluded place you have to use uh, uh, clothes and then marikchal and uh, do at a particular height so basically then all kind of uh, kriyas are explained wherein uh, uh, Krishna explained that it's not that easy to perform Ashtang Yoga and uh, Arjun further said that it's possible for me to control the air rather than uh, but uh, 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 performing these kind of a yoga. So uh, Krishna further explained that Bhakti Yoga is uh, much easier to progress in uh, Krishna consciousness rather than uh, going for the Ashtang Yoga where you are uh, creating a lot of uh, uh, troubles uh, or uh, maybe taking a lot of pains uh, to perform. The path is similar to what is there but uh, progressing in Bhakti Yoga is much much uh, easier. Uh, and then uh, Krishna uh, explains success and uh, fail failure is uh, from 37 to 45. For the S, uh, do not uh, have my notes. Don't know, but this is what I had remember. And 46 no to 47 yeah. is yogi, yogi. That Krishna further explained about the qualities of a yogi. So that that's what I, I would like to add here. Sorry about that. I'm not able to give you the complete thing of that. No problem. No problem, Messi. Thank you so much for sharing. So yes, uh, you know, after Krishna explaining that. Ultimately, to perform action in Krishna consciousness is the best way to live a life. In the sixth chapter, Krishna explains about Dhyana Yoga. 
और ऑल्सो नोन एज अष्टांग योगा अष्ट एज एज उमेश जी मैंशन अष्ट मीन्स एट अंग मीन्स लिम्स सो दिस अष्टांग योगा सिस्टम इज प्राइमरली द पर्पज ऑफ अष्टांग योगा इज टू हाउ टू कंट्रोल द माइंड सो हियर कृष्णा बिगिन्स विथ शेयरिंग अबाउट द इम्पॉर्टन्स ऑफ कंट्रोलिंग द माइंड Krishna shares that in order to perform one's activity in Krishna consciousness, one has to learn to control the mind. Because the mind can be your best of friends or the worst of enemy if you don't control it. Yeah, but if you control the mind, then it becomes the best of friends. Yeah. and krishna explains that how one should perform ashtanga yoga to control the mind hmm. so krishna explains in detail as to how a yogi who wants to control his mind has to go to the forest has to live in seclusion practice celibacy yeah and half close his eyes and focus on the tip of his nose hmm. so like this he has to discipline himself and to this when arjuna hears this arjuna says krishna this seems to be very impractical yeah he exclaims that to discipline the mind is more difficult than controlling the wind Yeah. and many of us we have experienced this sometimes right it's very difficult so krishna says by regular practice and detachment one can control the mind it's not that overnight you will think that yes from tomorrow i will control my mind and you'll be able to control yeah it is with regular practice and how does that practice come when one has a discipline in life yeah i was sharing with my kids yesterday that just coming back from school and playing the whole day is not going to help you grow in life or be successful in life so it's better to spare or take out some time to learn something and i was telling them that the pain of discipline is better than the pain of regret isn't it many times we come to yes. a juncture in our lives where we realize that oh god i wish i had tolerated that little bit of pain of or discomfort of doing something now i regret that i didn't learn something in the initial days of life i regret that i didn't take care of certain things in the initial days of life i regret that i did not tolerate my urges in the initial days of life right so the pain of discipline is better than the pain of regret yeah so one should learn this so krishna explains yeah that one can control the mind by regular practice and detachment yeah and then arjuna of course asks that what happens if after practicing all of this one is not able to complete the journey his spiritual journey due to whatever reason he leaves his journey or he untimely passes away yeah and then to this krishna explains that still even if one leaves this path in between there is no regret yeah because nothing is lost 
wherever, whatever stage you left your spiritual journey, in the next birth, you can begin from that very point. Yeah. Have you remember? Do you do you know there are some online forms that you fill, and then those forms automatically get saved. It says save and continue. So even if your browser gets stuck or laptop crashes, right? You open back and you feel a sigh of relief. Ah, whatever I filled, that is still there. Right? Have you experienced this online? Yeah, many yeah. of us have seen yeah. this, right? And doing the India visa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> visa yeah why? And your information are saved there and you continue from there. <laughs> correct, correct, correct. When you apply for Indian visa or or US visa, or, you know, so, so similarly, imagine all the spiritual things that you have done your spiritual journey that you have practiced in this life and somehow because of whatever reason your life is cut short or you are not able to continue your spiritual life. Right? So imagine, you know, so Krishna explains, Arjuna, there is nothing to regret because whatever you have done, Krishna protects that. And in the next birth, you get an opportunity to take birth in a family which is, you know, supportive to your spiritual journey. Or you get an environment which is conducive to progress in your spiritual life. Yeah, so Krishna gives that assurance to Arjuna. And then, of course, Krishna summarizes yeah, in the end of this chapter, sixth chapter, Krishna summarizes the Difficult path of Dhyana Yoga. And Krishna reaffirms yeah, that the perfection and goal of all the yoga systems is ultimately to be fully conscious of God at all times. Isn't it? The purpose of all the paths all the religions, all the activities that we do, ultimately the goal and purpose of life is somehow if we can remember the Supreme Lord at all times. And here Krishna explains that the easiest, the most efficient and the essential path is Bhakti Yoga. The Yoga of Devotion. How you can live a life of Bhakti and be connected to the Supreme Lord always. That is the knowledge which Krishna shares from 7th chapter to 12th chapter. Yeah. So, thus we finish the uh, recap of the first six chapters of the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. So, let's remember only the acronyms. Who can, what is the acronym of the first chapter? Now, now. Doubt. Second chapter. Gita. Third. Three. Fourth. Easy. Ears. Ears. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I'm yes. trying to do it from memory. <laughs> yes, yes. Ears. Fifth chapter. Step. Step. And, and sixth easy. chapter is? Easy. Course. Easy. Yeah. Good, good, good. Wonderful. So, any questions? Yes, Muna. A silly question. <laughs> hmm. um, you know, I I, I traveled uh, to Costa Rica 
And okay. all the while I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to be missing the reading and no reading happened. <laughs> so that's by the grace of Krishna. I was protected because I don't like to miss them. Yes. At any rate. Um, because you because you were not going to attend, Krishna arranged that there was a heavy rain in Dubai and we were just trying to re recover from Look, that. Look, I believe it. I believe it. I sleep <laughs> every night surrendering fully. <laughs> fully. Um the um i mean we went to the jungle uh, mm -hmm. and, and it was uh, something i had wanted to do for 28 years i have a dream board and it was on my dream board and i was very very scared and um just the growth that i have experienced within the last 2 years helped me overcome every fear mm -hmm. absolutely every fear i had from snorkeling and swimming with turtles to whatever the only thing i was uh, upset about is that i i had to get rid of a lot of insects mm. and i know that we have to look at every and i usually here at home i pick them up i put them outside but but there um it was difficult <laughs> How, how do you deal with that? How do you deal, like, if you have um, an infestation of ants, like carpet and ants, and you have to poison them, how do you deal with that when we have to look at everything equally and, you know, with equanimity and part and parcel of God? How mm. do we deal with that? Mm. Mm. When you come to my home, you'll see some mosquito repellents and mosquito uh, zappers you know okay i also think that same you know every time the mosquito gets you know um, but you know to one has to be practical also right in life and there comes a situation where you understand that, look, for you to focus on your spiritual journey, uh, you have to take certain steps. Or, for example, even for you to survive and not fall ill, you have to do certain things which are important. Uh, and that may involve that you may have to take care of certain pests so that they don't pester you and ideally ideally in a situation where we live if we keep the place nice and clean pests don't come and if we take care of certain uh, amount of cleanliness and certain amount of precautions and you know whatever needs to be done then pests don't come and disturb us but if at all it does then one has to take certain actions otherwise you will lose uh, your uh, ease and end up become disease yeah I mean those uh, mosquitoes they carry Illness and I Illness. came back with like yeah. hundred and fifty bites. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes uh, we have to take certain steps to maintain our body, <laughs> and when we do that with the understanding that uh, that you know, of course, I don't want to kill, but at the same time, I have to maintain my own body. Mm. Uh, so with that understanding and personally every time I have to do something like this I chant the Mahamantra okay thank you for see I, I wanted to ask you and I do I immediately go into thinking you know I, I say it <laughs> and mm. I say Hare, Hare Krishna and because I know it is it's life and um, so it's good that you said it. I mean, what can you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, one has to be practical. 
Yeah. Otherwise, your okay. whole house will be filled with, oh, this lady doesn't do anything. Let's come and live here. <laughs> She's a devotee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing will happen. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, thank you. It was on my mind. Yeah. 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 So, Prabhuji, this is something like Krishna reminding Arjun that you have to do your duties to live. Mm. So if we have to live our life peacefully, we have to do this much at least. Yes, but I also that doesn't mean that, okay, the moment I see anything which is disturbing, let me kill. We go and kill it yeah. for nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that has to be practical. One has to yeah. be practical. First and foremost, yes, one has to keep the place nice and clean. Have that's why in the olden days it's not that this problem was not there in the Vedic times, it was there, but they would burn certain herbs, natural herbs, and that would shoo away all the pests and all the insects and everything. Nowadays, people don't know what are those natural herbs. For example, if you come to Mayapur. You know, there are so many mosquitoes. Or, or forget Mayapur. In India, there are so many mosquitoes. And if you go to Gurukul, once I went to the Gurukul and I was staying there for almost a week. And I realized that every day they drink neem juice. Juice of neem tree. You know the neem tree? In Dubai, you'll find many neem trees around in UAE. Hmm. And neem tree is one of the most, most, most amazing Ayurvedic tree, Ayurvedic plant. You will find it everywhere in UAE. Everywhere. every Almost every street, the neem tree is there. So if you just simply take the neem leaves, clean it in the water, okay, and take those leaves, mix it in the grinder, yeah, and take the juice out of it and drink that juice. The mosquitoes will run away. They will never touch you. You will be sitting like this and the person next to you will be bitten million times and the mosquitoes will not even touch you. And of course, it clears your stomach. Uh, you know, because neem is very, 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 very pungent. You know, so normally people don't even like to drink it. Mm -hmm. All your tooth problems, you know, all your gum issues, your tooth issues, you will never have if you brush with neem bark. As a kid, my you know, in my village and all, there was no toothpaste and toothbrush in back in the days. They would just go out, you know, break a neem bark and soak it in the I mean keep it in the water and next day morning they they would just rub the neem bark around their tooth and that's it. My father in his whole life never went to a dentist. Yeah. And me, in the last 10 years that I live in Dubai, I at least went 20 times. You know? So that's how the lifestyle is nowadays. People don't have this knowledge. So like this, you know, they would burn... A uh, few herbs, and they would drink few things, which will never they will never be affected by these insects and pests. You know, there were certain there are certain plants, there are certain uh, um, um, you know natural uh, oils or ointments that you use with which these kind of insects and pests never come in the house. It's like this. We don't have the knowledge of this. So what do we do? We end up killing them. And this should. So that's, that's Kali Yuga for us.
Yeah. Yeah. Even if we don't want, we end up committing sin. Isn't it? Right. That's how it felt. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I was telling my granddaughter, you're making me commit a crime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, probably on continuing on the same thing what uh, Mona asked. As I, I go in the morning for a walk and uh, in the park, I see a lot of uh, big insects lying upside down. And they're still alive, and but then uh, you look at that and then there are some ants start to uh, disturb them, maybe take them or eat them. Now you look at sometimes you feel that okay, maybe just turn them around so that they can fly or they can go. But then again, the, the second mind says that okay, maybe this is nature. Why disturb? Why attack karma uh, from both sides? Maybe they, this is the, the destiny of this uh, insect that it has to be eaten by the mm -hmm. ants. So if you disturb them, uh, maybe you will atta attach the karma from both. So really don't know what, what to say or what to do in that condition. Yeah, just leave them alone. Yeah. 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 We cannot we cannot get involved in uh, other persons, other living beings' lifestyle. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it will become like Jad Bharat story. You know the story. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. How he got attached to the deer and eventually became a deer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I did also have a question about Sanjaya. Mm. Um. How was Sanjaya able to um, see from afar uh, uh, who endowed this gift on him? Mm -hmm. So actually, Sanjaya was a very, 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 very learned person. Although he was a charioteer <clears throat> of the Trastra, but he was a student of Vyasadeva. Veda Vyas. So because he was the student of Vyas Dev, he was given the boon by Vyas Dev okay. that you will be able to see and hear and understand things from far away. So that's how he had this boon. Thank you. Yeah. So was he given this boon only for the war uh, or he had this uh, for whole of his life because uh, when Vyas they offered this boon to Dhritarashtra and when I also knew that maybe Sanjay was also there sin, but the, the Dhritarashtra was not interested. So he, he knew in his heart that what is going to happen but and he did not want to see that despite he was a blind but he refused. So then uh, when Vyasa gave this boon to Sanjaya and Sanjay. So it was this only for this uh, 18 days when Mahabharata uh, war was uh, being fought or he had this, uh, like he was a learned man. He was disciple of Ved Vyasa. So was he carrying it all his life? Uh, from what I, uh, from what I remember, is that Vyasdev had given this boon to uh, Sanjaya. Not, okay. not for the war only. It was a boon that was blessed to Sanjaya, which okay. Sanjaya could effectively use during the war to help Dhritarashtra. Yeah. It's not that after 18 days that boon went away. Yeah. Yes. Anything else? Any other question?
Raki Mataji, how are you? How is everything? Yes, all very good. Thank you. I was really looking forward to the session today. I missed all the other ones because I um, I think I attended the um, the last session just after my upper. Yes. Um, but it's been really interesting to go through the acronyms. But I think I need to perhaps do the course from scratch because it sounds so uh, so interesting hearing everybody. And um, yeah, no, very very interesting. And uh, yeah, all good. I've got Gershiv in the background there, so I need to get him to bed because he's got a 5.30 wake up. So I might have to take leave now. Um, yes, yes. Unfortunately. Yeah, we could see Gershiv yeah. jumping around. I know, and he's got cricket <laughs> at the 6.30. So I'm, uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get up. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Raki. Yes. Anyone else has any questions? Great, great. I'm so happy that we could do this uh, session today because, you know, it's, it was just feeling like we were on a long gap. At least mm -hmm. we got the ball rolling and came back, you know, coming back to our schedule of Thursday evenings. So it's wonderful to see you all and... Uh, Yes, looking forward to see you all next Thursday once again. And we will begin with the seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Hare Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you.